you know, your hair was not possible. Yeah, for real. So I like yeah. I like when I got older, I would meet people that would be like, well, you know, I used to draw, but I stopped doing it, and it was always weird to me. Like, mm. why'd you stop? You know, and and some people. I don't. I don't know if it's, it's something that America puts in the mind of a lot of you know, young Black Americans. Like they just was like, "Yo, I just didn't think that could be a reality." Huh. I didn't really wonder if it could be a reality. I was just like, "Yo, that's what I want to do." Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go get it. Like I want to draw comics. Like I want to work like where Jim Lee's at. You know what I mean? And I would just do shit, and I'd be like, "Okay, I feel like this is," you know, I'm looking at books that are out. I'm like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I think I got a shot." You know what I mean? And then, you know, sometimes, you know, later on, you find out you had more of a shot than you really knew. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, as central as you need to be, could be, choose to be, you don't want to be anywhere else, trust me kid, 500 podcasts and more, plus a thousand videos, you got enough in store, so yeah, delve in, keep them sharing and caring. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets, just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024. Today we got a deuce double, special guest, Transatlantic to here, very, very, very grateful to have him inside the Arts Arcade. Um, a gentleman that has uh, transcended not just rap but also into graph uh, and on body artwork in the form of album covers to the likes of Tribe Called Quest, Eminem, DJ Spinner, logos with uh, Drink Champs, Annoyed by Nature to name a few. And then we've got another gentleman, uh, his a crew uh, affiliate, a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine as it is. Um, not only a world champion DJ, Scratch Pervert original, original like the rest of us, but also He's got a new album called Speechless coming out. We have Scam. We have Harry Love. How are we doing? Chilling. <laughs> that, that was like the most legit intro <laughs> of, of a show I had, uh, that I've been on. I'm, oh, shit. Yo, uh, I'm here listening. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you don't know this guy. Is. <laughs> How's your travels? How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm chilling. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, man. Just, uh, I mean, they, you know, people always be like, yo, London's just like New York. And I'm like, yeah. And I was like. He's like, yo, so how is it to you? I was like, it's a lot like New York. <laughs> <laughs> there, were a lot, there were a few similarities, isn't there, Harry? You he he can't confront on that. No, he was like, he was like, yeah, he, we're going to Piccadilly. He was like, that's like Times Square. As soon as I walked out of the train station, I was like, it's Times Square. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's Times Square for sure. Like a micro Times Square. <laughs> yeah, everything's yeah. just scaled down here. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, originally from uh, Florida. Mom, no, Miami. Miami? Yeah, it's a different two place. Two different worlds. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's two different, different worlds. It's a very different place. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's its own ecosystem for sure. Whenever I've been, I always felt like it's, oh, yeah, man. I feel like it's like Europe. It's like Mediterranean. I think it's that. I mean, it's Caribbean. Yeah, that's it's, it. Yeah, like Miami's the Caribbean it's for beautiful. for sure. Like the, the climate is subtropical and just the people, mm. you know, you, you name it. We, Argentinians, Venezuelans, Nicaraguans, mm. Cubans, Jamaicans, Dominicans, Haitians. Mm. Yeah. Very different kind of America. I, well, I guess to a lot of other Americans, maybe to us, that's pretty much like. That's pretty yeah, much what it that's, is. That's, that's America. Yeah. Like, you know, a bunch of immigrants doing their thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you're down in, uh, you're in Atlanta at the moment, right? Oh, uh, yeah, we got family out there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you see, the, the, the bohemian life of, a, of an artist keeps on... Uh, Shit, know, man. That shit comes at a price, bro. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. It comes at a price. There's nothing worse than, you know, this kind of bestowed upon you uh, energy of, like, having to find, inf- you know, inspiration or more so find work in all these different areas of the world. I mean, yeah, it all depends on the metric you use, man. You know, the, ol- the older you get, it, 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 I think it more so is, like, if you want to involve other people in your shit. Mm. So if you want to do like the relationship shit, mm. you gotta know who you're fucking with and what what they want. They be like, oh, you're going where? Mm. For what? You know? And I, you know, I, I'm the type of person I get up. All depends, man. If there's a conversation, sure. But 
if there's an opportunity somewhere, that shit ain't coming to me. Mm. I had to go. Yeah. I got to go to where it's yeah. at. You yeah. know, some people don't, they don't fuck with that. And and with where relationships are concerned, you can't underplay it to them because then they'll say, well, why are you bother going anyway? But if you overhype it and say it's going to be great, they're going to want to come as well. I don't mind that. I'm cool with that. Like, okay. You can fucking come, like, for sure. The great. No yeah. problem. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we could work the virtual. So. Mm. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, good. I'm, I'm for that. I don't got a problem with mm, that. Mm, mm. Harry, what's going on? How are you, my brother? What's been, what's been here, really man. good? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah, what's been happening? Just, just uh, you know, just in my little cubby hole, soldiering away. The first of its kind Harry Love album is about to drop and mm-hmm. sue on the world. Yeah, how's it yeah, feel? I'm trying not to say too much, hence the, the name Speechless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The worst, the worst promo man ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sticking to the concept, right? Yeah, that's it, man. The beats do the talking, that's why it's called Speechless. We've been waiting a long time for an album of you. It's the start of a trilogy, so... Is it? Yeah, so I'm kicking it off with that. Wow. Yeah. So instrumental first? Then a UK hip-hop album. Wow. Then... Third one. <laughs> the third one, yeah. yeah. The, the return of the Jedi of the of the trilogy. How did you guys how did you guys become homies to the point where you're hanging at each other and you know, staying over each other's yards and stuff? How, how, how did we get to this point here, gentlemen? Got connected up, man. Just got talking the same page. I think uh I think we probably had a little yakety yak MySpace days. Mm. Yeah. And then he was talking to uh, more recently on Instagram. So like I said, I've been like trying to get over here for mm-hmm. a long time. So I'm always like, yo, so, oh, you're in London? Like, oh, what's going on over there? What's that shit like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But you know, like I started, uh, I got got my shit. I started going to Europe more often. But I, I was going to Berlin, you know, like mm-hmm. I go to Berlin a lot. And so from Berlin and, you know, Copenhagen and some other places, but I'm still like, Still, you know, like other people, like what's her name, Ellie? Yep, Ellie. Yeah, Shea. like Ellie. I'm like, yo, Ellie, what, what, yo, you, you're out there? Like, hey, what's going on mm-hmm. over there? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and shout out to Psycho Beats and, you know, shit like that. And so he was like, hey, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yes, <laughs> sure. Let's fucking go. Oh, nah. Yeah, yeah. And also, you work with someone else who's a mutual friend of all of ours. Ooh. From here, we were supposed to link him the other morning. Remember? Oh, Farmer Beats. Oh, Farmer, Farmer Beats. Wee, that's our guy. It's crazy wow. because I'm like, <laughs> I guess it depends on the circles. Because I'm like, I go to play. I'd be like, I, you know, like before I left Berlin, I think like I did a show the night before, and I was just like, "Yo, buy, buy this joint, at Farmer Beats," and people was like, "But when we did the joint, everybody's like, Yo Yeah, yeah, yeah.' And I was yeah, like, yeah. "Yeah, Farmer." It's this like, the yeah, thing. He's he's one of those. Actually. He's one of those unsung, always, you know, he's, he's, a, he's an architect of the, of the beat. And, yeah, and an amazing like, MC as well. I, got, I gotta say, yeah, like he did uh, my boy Shoddy's album. Um, and, you know, I was featured on a track on there. Mm. And it was just like, the quality, just the sonically, you know, a lot of these underground guys, like, it's very dirty. And, mm. You know what I mean? Which is fine. You know what I mean? That's cool. But his shit was sounding like, yeah, that shit was like, that shit was right. I was like, okay. You're very versatile in the sense that you can drop a verse on a beat, but then oh, I'll do your illustrations as well. I'll do your album cover. I mean, this is fucking, this is gold dust to a lot of people. Right? Um, I mean, that's, you know, like when I, that was my way in. I didn't really have a, yo, I'm going to be a rapper. I was not that guy. Like, there's a lot of guys that tell you, oh, you know, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a rapper. I was like, I ain't think about that. <laughs> like, if you told, if you told like, 15-year-old me, like, oh, yo, bro, you're going to do rap records, I'd be like, hmm. Well, I just wanted to skate. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't care about that. Oh, yeah, because you was in skating and all of that, right? Yeah, like mm. that and then, like, I wanted to do comic books, mm. you know? But, uh, matter of fact, when I got the Tribe gig, I had my foot in the door at Marvel, Oh shit! Yeah, and I kind of, I kind of put it to the side. I was like eighteen or some <laughs> shit like that. I just kind of put it to the side to do the tribe album, you know. That's that's not a basic kind of, you know, all at once coming at your Marvel and then tribe and it. I mean, they, well, they none come of in it, trees, right? They none of trees. it came at me. Like I went and yeah. got those things. Like yeah. I, like I, you know, I mean, I got invited to a party and I saw Q Tip talking to the Rizzo and I was just like, Yo, you need some artwork. 
you know, the Marvel shit, I had no connects. That yeah. was, like, straight up, like, I think I just sent in a submission. Yeah. Like, I just drew some shit and sent it in. And then they were like, yo, all right, yo, do something else. You know, I was on my second round of submissions. Mm. Um, so, yeah, like, none of that stuff, like, came to me. Yeah, but there is a synergy to it that when you're on a roll and you're like, uh, you know, what well, fucking Q-tips over there, let me just go and... I'm just going. Why, well, I'm, I'm, why not? What, bro, what's the worst that could It's happen? not even a role. I was just. I, that's just how I was wired. Like mm -hmm. I was just like, I went because I'm from Miami, and it's like there wasn't nobody came to Miami. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the first guys I ever did something for was like Black Moon and Smith and Wesson. And um, hold on, hold hold on, on, yeah, they were No, no, they didn't. They didn't use okay, any of what okay, I did. Okay. But the first people I was like, yo, I'm going to pitch a logo to these people was Black Moon, and I did and. Me knowing more about my craft now, like it's, I did an illustration. It wasn't really a logo, but I did some shit for Black Moon. They they did a, a in store at Blue Note Records, like super legendary mm -hmm. record store. It's not around anymore, but mm -hmm. if everybody would come to Blue Notes, you know. So I went, I drew something, took it there. They were like, oh yeah, come to the show. So then I went home. Then I did something for Smith and Wesson. Then I came back to the show the next day, you know. And I tried to, I performed at that show. That didn't go very well. Really? That was like, yeah, that was my first time on stage in front of like a crowd full of people. And I was like, I smoked a little bit. And I, I was like, Bad. I fucking got on there. I said like two words. And then everything, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> like my boy had to come rescue me. I was like, it was pretty bad. But I feel like, I feel like everybody's got to have that. Like, boy, you stunk on ice. Like, you got to have that. You got to have that moment for you to be like, oh, oh shit, no, never doing again. that again. <laughs> never doing that again. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was talking to him, and I remember being like, after, like, I was still high, and I was just like, next thing I know, like, they were gone, and I was on the ground looking up, and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> I was like, did I do that while they were talking? Oh. <laughs> and they was like, nah, nah, you were good. <laughs> then you were down. I was like, oh, all right. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> Actually, while we're on the subject, we've got uh, some bits here, which are obviously on sale. I'm going to look at trying getting some sort of exhibition thing popping here. Oh, man, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, comics and such. Um, me and Harry, we come from the same school of thought of, uh, you know, I guess it's Bob Marley in a way. If you can sing, you can, if you can talk, you sing, you can walk, you can dance. But with hip hop genres, street culture, you always lean into all different areas, you know, from production if you're a DJ or, right. you know, beatboxing and, you know, rapping or whatever. Um, you being integrated early with the skateboarding scene and all the other things that come along with the streets and in being into comics and such like did, did you have a did you have an ear to you know it's all Winwood and places like that now in Miami like where graffiti is just uh, like I huge. mean now nah, my like most of my real shit that that was all like in New York really yeah yeah um I kind of stopped going to school at some point and I did it proper, like I went and got my GED and all that shit, but like I was just like, yeah, I'm done with that, all right, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And it was basically like, okay, well, what do you want to do? You want to go go to college? You know, like my gifted teacher, you know, rest in peace, Miss P, like she told me first week of high school, she was just like, yo, you should leave this. Like, just get your GED and either start your career or go to college. And I, was, I didn't understand it, mm. but you know, whatever, like eventually, I, I didn't get anything out of school. Hmm. Like, um, I think a lot of gifted kids, like, that that just regular education system just hmm. is not, you know what I mean? So I had to figure out what it is I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to be the album cover guy. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And there was no roadmap to that. It just, you couldn't really do it from Miami. Hmm. And... My cousin Krim, from uh, the group Jig Masters. Yeah, of course. Right, so that's that's my cousin, blood cousin, uh. and so that's why I was on all those spinner tracks mm -hmm. or whatever have you. And you know, the first thing we had was like on Beyond Real. Yeah. And whatever have you, you know, he he let me come up there, you know, sleep on the couch, whatever the fuck. And that was, you know, through him and IG off, like Krim. Got me through to a lot of the major label. IG connects. off. Yeah, rest of the <sighs> yeah, but killer. You know, I, I was telling Harry like 
think it's like crazy with mm-hmm. it, like off the top. So that was it. It was just like, okay, I know I want to be this thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I just kind of had to figure it out. So it was just became a thing where I had a little black, bl- I, it, was, it was like a three ring binder with plastic sleeves and I would have like, like Xeroxes and color copies of pieces in there. And that was what I took around with me. And it, it kind of got to the point where it was like, people, yo, you got your book? I was just like synonymous. People were like, yo, you got your book? You got, yo, you know, let's show Ghostface. Yo, let's show this person. Wow. And and I also, you know, I would go to things. I would sneak in things because I was young. Mm. You know, there were a lot of places. Like, even where I was when I got the Tribe gig, like, mm-hmm. I was, it was during the day, but it was like a, like a, like a proper club, you know, like, I couldn't have got in there. I was too young. Mm-hmm. Like, even right before M got the deal, there was a club we were at in uh, Vegas, I wasn't old enough to get in the club. Like, Paul Rosenberg had to fucking <laughs> really? get me in the club. Like, yeah, uh, it was like maybe a month or two before my 21st birthday. You know what I mean? And they, they got me in or whatever have you. So, yeah, man, everything, I just, that my brain was just trained. Like, yo, and, you know, back mm. then there was, it wasn't like, yo, I'm a DM this person. Like, mm. nah, bro, it was like, you had to, like, somebody might have gave you, like, yo, such and mm. such is going to be here. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, maybe you, you could. Can I, um, yeah. This, that, and the third. and Or I, I would just have it. Like, I just took it everywhere. Like, oh, well, I'm just going into the store to get fucking a bag of apples. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'll bring my, my black book <laughs> with me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then, but New York is the kind of city where it's like, oh, shit, Leonardo DiCaprio. Hey. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, really, about how much do you really want it? Where nowadays, if he was just to jump on algorithm, well, I, you know. I feel like yeah. I feel like I so. you know we talk we talk about this like the difference between like uh, like maybe like different nationalities and like Black Americans who you know the 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 situations where they got there were a little different, uh, but not to say that that same shit didn't happen to us where we were dropped off at, mm-hmm. but. For me, going to, you know, America as a, as a little kid was like, <laughs> whoa, like, this this is all bonus round. <laughs> like, I didn't know, we, we didn't have, my, like, I couldn't tell you, like, who was poor when I was a kid because nobody starved in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, we were good, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't until we get here and we, you know, like, I get a little older and I see the difference in what people have. The class system. And- so... I don't know. I kind of theorize, like, for me, it's like, yo, you know, your hair was not possible. Yeah, for real. So, I like, yeah. I like when I got older, I would meet people that would be like, well, you know, I used to draw, but I stopped doing it. And it was always weird to me, like, mm. why'd you stop? You know, and, and some people, I don't, I don't know if it's, it's something that America puts in the mind of a lot of, you know, young black Americans. Like, they just was like, yo, I just didn't think that could be a reality. <laughs> I didn't really wonder if it could be a reality. I would just say, yo, that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go get it. Like, I want to draw comics. Like, I want to work, like, where Jim Lee's at. You know what I mean? And I would just do shit, and I'd be like, okay, I feel like this is, you know, I'm looking at books that are out. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think I got a shot. You know what I mean? And then, you know, sometimes, you know, later on, you find out you had more of a shot than you really Pretty knew. Cool, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, like, yeah, just just a little bit more juice. Like mm-hmm. you would have been in there. Like you know, you don't know that till later on. You meet people that were behind the scenes, and it was like, oh yeah, we remember getting your stuff. And but it's also age and wisdom, right? Because if you're like twenty three, twenty four, trying to get it, like you don't realize how much of your own self you put in the way. <laughs> you get in the way of your own. Yeah. Oh yeah, Momentum. bro. Like I. Or oh, that these are windows of time that don't just yeah, yeah, repeat yeah. over and over. I mean, yeah, that's right. Yeah, like, yeah. Finite. Yeah, one one right. thing that just never <laughs> it never plays well in the industry is just not playing the game, so yeah. to speak. And I I do I don't play the game. Is there a hierarchy <laughs> of of, of uh, cover designers that you know the gatekeepers? Nah, bro. Because the the ones that got the most exposure were major labels, and once you're dealing with a major label, bro, they suck. They like. You're nothing. Really? They don't give a fuck about you. you know, like, I mean, I've never heard anyone to tell me different. 
You know what I mean? Like, you see how they might treat recording artists. You're just a fucking visual artist. Like, <laughs> they're not worried. They, they will replace you so fucking quick. They just, you know what I mean? Unless you have the artist, like, unless the artist is at a place where they can truly advocate for you. And you know what I mean? Like, they have to, they feel like, okay, well, you know, mm-hmm. Harry wants this guy, so this, that, and the third. Not to say that I was, like, super problematic, but I just, they want everything, and they they don't want to pay for it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you want to buy me out for the rights? Fine. Hey, there's a fucking book called the Graphic Artist Guild Handbook. Mm-hmm. And this is not, like, people that just sit down and make up weird shit. Like, All these right. are, this is done every year wow every you know year I mean? every year they make a, an addition and they they look at the market and and so when i was younger like i used to look at that book and and so i would kind of have an idea of like well this sucked this price is not good yeah, yeah. you know what i mean so it was just like you know like the tribe album i wasn't gonna do that mm. my mom was like oh you should do it and i was like yeah you know, because at that point I had made better money for other things. When they wanted to do Slim Shady LP, Interscope didn't want to pay my rate. Hmm. They, you know, what I mean, but it was it became one of those things where because you know their story was like, oh, you know, he's an unproven artist, and so for me, I'm just like, you know what, I'm a ride with my boy. Like, I, right, hmm. whatever. Like, I I took that. You know, what I mean, no problem. Hmm. So, you know the. That that side of the fence for me is like, eh. You know what it is? Is like when taking a punt like that, Harry, you're related to this. Is when you do a remix and that goes bigger than the actual original song, and you only got paid that set amount of money with no publishing. It's that kind of vibe, isn't it? Where you're just like, oh man, it's great, I did it. Oh, well, I, was, I was about to say, there's a kind of knack when you've got certain. They they're good at dangling certain job carrots in front of you and you have to kind of know how to play your role without yeah. being problematic, like you said, but also yeah. maintain your sort of... Integrity to... Well, no, not just your integrity, but be employed, you know, make them want to pick you mm-hmm. without being a pick-me type mm-hmm. of character, do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's a kind of... There's a sort of knack to... Well, for me, at least, anyway. Yeah, yeah like... Fine line. I, I think... Hitting certain markers. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. I think I was, I was so young that it was just like, in certain instances, people were just like, Hey, he's a fucking kid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, they expected a certain level of difficulty, but also, being from Miami, we didn't have a music industry. Mm-hmm. So no one taught me the whole, hey, boy. Oh, mm-hmm. Hey, Kel. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I can't stand this motherfucker. Hey, man, let's do lunch. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, nobody taught hey, me that. how's the wife? How's the kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and um, <laughs> I, it, it took a... Matter of fact, it took a, it took a homegirl of mine, and she used to be like... <laughs> He was like, you know, Scam, I love you. I really do. But, boy, you have a way of just sucking the energy right out of a fucking room. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but, yo, but it, it was a real shit. And I was just like, you know, because in Miami, it was just, man, there just was no, there was none of that. It was just like dope dealers, like, and just neighborhood sets and shit like that. So it was like nobody, like, you could show up to a spot and they'd be like, hey, I don't like you, Cracker. Like, really? And you're like, me? They'll be like, yeah, I don't like you. You can't come around here, dog. And you just like, I mean, you could go ahead and go against the grain. It might not end up well, but you know what I mean? Or, you know, you'd be like, okay, cool. So that was the kind of mentality I adopted. Like, if if I had a, a whiff that you didn't like me, I ain't talking to you. Unless, uh, unless I'm doing something to, like, really be like, hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> you know, like, one of those. But generally, like, I'm t- I'll walk in the room, shake everybody's hand, and just like walk past you. Mm. Like, yeah, I don't fuck with you. It's fine. It's cool. You know what? It's fa- <laughs> no, but I get it because um, a lot of people will quite happily disregard the feelings that they have or the energy in the room just to make edgeway in whatever it is they're doing, even if the energy is really bad. But sometimes those people end up better off. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And some of them end up in the news uh, headlines. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Around well, the we're world continuously. Globally. Yeah, like it, well, it, it was a. Italy. That was a, <laughs> that was a tough one, man. Like I had to really get on some shit. Like I had to turn it into a game to learn to like shove some of that shit to the side and and test out different things 
test out different ways to approach people. But mm. the thing about people is there's no one way to approach everybody. Mm. You know what I mean? So some days I'll be like, okay, I'm going to try the arrogant approach. Mm. You know what I mean? Like some people, they fucks with it. Mm -hmm. And then some people are like, mm, I don't like that guy. And then some, like, you know, I'll be humble. And then some people be like, they just, they want that that arrogance. Yeah. You know, like, 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 let's say when I met Royce, Royce just, he carried himself in a way, and I, I was still like a skate rat. I mean, it, like, he carried himself in a way that was just like, I don't know who this dude is, but I'm, I'm sure he has a record deal. <laughs> really? You know, yeah, yeah, no, Roy, like, he's just very confident and, and this, that, and, like, and I didn't understand that, you know, not that I needed to understand, not, more so, like, I would just be kind of watching it, like, well, and I would watch how some people would kind of interact with him and deal with him, and it always gave me that vibe, like, it's like, you know, when you're trying to get on and, like, damn, man, oh, I wish I could get sponsored by this clothing mm -hmm. company or this company, and you, you don't get no hookups, but when you're popping, those companies want to give you free shit. Mm. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's that's what was happening with him. I, I don't know his business or whatever have you, but it just felt like he had that that air about him and mm. it, it attracted yeah. that kind of shit. And, you know, he had to fucking deal with Tommy Boy and he was doing his thing and I was just like... Mm. You know, and you couldn't talk... Like, what could you say? You know what I mean? Like, the guy rhyme his ass off. You know what Curry I mean? Curry Singh Poppin. Incredible legacy. I, I think uh, the first yeah. time I the first time I went to New York, I was given some advice by one of my dad's friends who at the studio where we recorded all live and all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. right? And he went, "Look, Harry, when you go to New York, just don't you see this whole sort of like um, calm, cool, humble demeanor <laughs> where you won't say stuff." Where he went, "They won't respect that in New York. They don't even understand. You won't if you want to go and meet people and make ways." Mm. You like the New York way is I'm Harry. I did this, da da da. Yeah. So that would be something that would be counterintuitive to us as English people because mm. that rubs English people up the wrong way. Oh. Entering a room like that, yeah. maybe a little bit different after the last twenty, thirty years of sort of cross fertilization culturally. Yeah, yeah. But generally, I was, and and I would say that rings rings completely yeah, true. Yeah, hundred percent. See, it was a very it was very true of the experience. I had to learn that on the fly and. Gradually over time, I've learned to assimilate little qualities of that from. It for real. like that shit took me a while. Was it? Did you have to do the same kind of adjustment? I, I mean, being from outside of New York, because I know there's definitely a phenomenon of people outside of New York feel like they're usually, treated as outsiders. Mm -hmm. Usually, because the industry was so small, you know what I mean. Like generally, like if I end up in a room, um, that's you know, there's always some sort of preamble with mm -hmm. that. Like oh, you know, after after I did the tribe album. That's who I was. I was like, that's the guy that did the tribe album. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And and it was fine because it opened up a lot of doors in, in a certain sense. And then, then so we fast forward to fucking, okay, that's the guy that did the pill and mm -hmm. the this, that, and the third. Okay, and that was another level. But then when Stan dropped, then it was like, I was like, like everywhere I went, oh, you know. But then I realized, you know, EFN, you know, shout out Crazy Hood. Mm -hmm. He would be, you know, like he he's a he's like the the mentor because he's just he's just got such a sharp business mind and you know he just knows how to navigate the, the the industry and there was a lot of shit that he would just not take personally. Really. You know what I mean? And I just yeah I didn't have that. I was like what? I was like oh, fuck that guy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and and he'd be like. He, he would always tell me shit, but he's like, yo, man, I know you hate that shit, but, and and that, so I just got used to doing it. Now I'd be like, yeah, blah, 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 I did this, uh, drink champs, let's scam from Stan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't, at the time when it's going on, you don't realize how big something is. It's like how seismic it is. You know, it's like when yeah. people have to do their same song that they want you know, number one with. For the rest of their life. It, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh good. Say it again. Sorry, say it again. <laughs> you know, play it again. I've seen people have meltdowns. On yeah, stage yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> but, but yeah, like I used to kind of feel like going on and be like, "Hey, I did this. I did this." But really, man, it's like you you gotta let people know because mm -hmm. 
my homeboy would tell me, he'd be like, yo, man, uh, like M1 from Dead Press, he'd be like, yo, man, there's people out there that want to give you money, but they got to know who you are. For real. And I used to be like, okay, you know, there, there are a lot of people that are like, yo, you're, you're too humble. I get that shit a lot. Do you? Yeah, but, but to me, it's like, what the fuck, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't no I think, billionaire. Like, you know what, though? I think with, with the hip-hop culture, street culture in general, of course, there's all your work leans a lot into the comic world, but there's graph, there's hip-hop as a news, uh, a reflection of what's going on culturally. Right. And I think more than anybody who, within the art world, you can lean into podcasting a lot more than the norm the normal artist would because oh, of oh, from, from what end like from a street culture point of view no, I mean like be like interviewing people no or? as in like you being oh okay you know exposing yourself within the genres of you know what I mean because because not a lot of other genres do that you don't get like heavy metal podcasts where they're talking about Eddie from Iron Maiden I mean, you know I mean probably do but if you don't listen to metal podcasts why do you mention Iron Maiden and I think that's a good segue actually oh yeah I'm a, I'm a huge Iron Maiden fan mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 Eddie yeah. Uh, Eddie is, was incredible and, and there was this other band called Tankard and they had this crazy dog with this gremlin looking dude like there is a relationship with the art that of that era that kind of was defined by um, what the techniques were at the time and I, I would Eddie the Head was a, I, I remember seeing that sprayed up on walls a lot like in my childhood I mean as much as graffiti graffiti I remember seeing sort of metal it, uh, it's something to be said yeah, head. Yeah. about timing you know what I mean like it's just like the things that I've done and you know that were done what's interesting now is like you know I, I remember the first thing first CD I probably had or maybe it was a tape I think I got tape. Seven Son of a Seven Son. Crazy cover. Um, Derek Riggs. And I remember just, you know, getting that and just being like, fuck. Yeah. And to me, the music... And what's interesting about Iron Maiden is, like, one, they never have photos of themselves nah. on their, their shit. Two, it's, you know, I guess... There are some instances where... You have to ask yourself, what's the connection between the music and this art specifically? But sometimes there is a very direct mm-hmm. connection to it. Um, and I remember that that album, the intro and the title song, very were like it just that mood. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you sit there and you look at these things, and and it's weird for me to actually that was heavily influenced in that way. I've met people, some that'd be like, "Yo, I wouldn't be doing what I was doing." If it wasn't for, you know, oh, this or, you know, the tribe or this, mm. that, and the third. And I'd be like, yeah. Like, seriously, like, I'm just beyond honored that, but it's funny, like, you know, I'm, I'm playing that part in that cycle yeah, 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 again. Yeah. And then, you know, people would be like, yo, I want to do album covers. And I'll be like, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's not the same, bro. Everybody looks at their shit on the phone. Like, back then, you get a piece of vinyl, you get to look at it thing and read the credits and just you know I mean just even just even be, being able to see the art on a bigger scale mm. like now as illustrators we have to scale you know a lot of times it depends on your mindset like mm. you know I, I I definitely have a lot of things I have to take into the thought process so one thing that has come up you know dealing with I was doing a black violin cover and they were like yo this is a lot of detail People are gonna be looking at this on their phone. They're not gonna see all that. What? And wow. I, I was, a, I was super pissed off, but there was a truth to it. Mm. I mean, that is some, you have. I like to consider things how it would look if it was scaled down to that yeah. size, and if it was on the like a matchbox on the sides, mm. right? On you know a Piccadilly Circus or yeah. video build. But I, but I yeah. believe I believe now. So in, in that regard, like if you're big enough to where you can move physical. Save the detailed dope shit for the physical. For, that, mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, for those folks or whatever have you. Like when you think back to what the. Because it's also a social thing with um, media playing a huge part that, like you say, it's down to the size of a, 
you know, small pixel. But yeah. but there's also the fact that when you used to get an album, Sex Pistols is a great example, mm. because not only the way that that was constructed, the wording, the colours, the, 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 and then the conjuring of idea, the mystique of, like, what these guys were actually about. And the only way that you could go and check them out is either A, on the record, or B, live. Live, yeah. So this held a lot more va- a lot more currency, didn't it, you know? Mm. Um, and the same with the Tribe album, you know? It was this kind of mythical character that, you know, had its own place in culture yeah. um, outside of hip-hop as well. For most people, you know, Tribe Called Quest was one of their first um, acts that they saw. Um, live or in on album, yeah. It wasn't the first. Oh, it wasn't the first. It wasn't okay. The first, but yeah. that was yeah, yeah. Just just a crazy anecdote to think that the the, the standard or the motivation of having it, how it's changed so much. The motivation of having an album, and what 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 that artwork actually means. <sighs> Man, it's it's, bro, it's it's so different for everybody. Um, I personally feel like if you have something to say, shit, man, make the music. But I think what we have now is like there are a lot of people that just think like okay this is oh this will happen quickly like oh I'll just do this like it's easy you know I've seen this person do it like back to, you know we would watch I don't even want to say back then but but I like to see people that I go that's why you're on stage mm-hmm. you know what I mean not like oh I could do that so there's a lot of I could do that and there are a lot of people in the crowd that feel like I could do that mm-hmm. and. They're probably right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like some of them, I couldn't even argue, you know. Mm. Um, logos, circle back around that with Drink Champs. Now that, that, how, how did, that, was that another hustle or was that a... Nah, nah, he, he's like, that's fam, you mm. know, like, I had, at that point, I did a couple things um, for Crazy Hood. Like, they have their own, his crew, Crazy Hood, they have their own character, they call them Norm. <laughs> and it's basically, it really was, you know, whatever. You can say I zapped it. It's inspired by, like, Quiet Riot had an album cover called Metal Health. Yeah, with the mask. Right. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a dude in a straight jacket. Yeah. A hooded straight jacket. That's right. Um, well, the, the Norm is a hooded straight jacket with, like, a metal mask, like, strapped to his face. Uh, and you, you, you know, he's just like eye hole and mouth hole, mm-hmm. and that. So I did a couple things for him. So at that point, you know, he told me he had a. At the time, I think I was co-hosting a show he had with him called OG Radio, <laughs> and then he was like, you know, he had this idea for another show called Drink Champs, and you know they call. What is it? What did he used to call him? Bacardi Man. He used to call <laughs> EFN Bacardi Man or EFN in a cup. Like th- those guys drink, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it it wasn't. A, so that was a pre. That was kind of a name, like you know what I mean. Drink Champs, and he was like, "Yo, it's called Drink Champs." They they didn't even have an episode done. And honestly, like as soon as he said the name, I was like, I did like five sketches, and like right th- like, you know, like. Right away, I did like five sketches, and one of them was pretty much the the way the logo ended up. He was like, "Wow, yeah, that one." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, all right, that's the one." And I went, and that was one of the best like vector based logos I had ever done. It was like it was a lot of detail for me, and uh, you know, he he did the logo. I mean, I did the logo, and then eventually they did some shows, and it was like, all right. It's not a basic story, is it? <laughs> well, it's just crazy how you happen to do these things that happen to become iconic fucking well, game it's, changers. The, yeah. Yo, iconic is... Being in the right place. It's a mix. It's a mix of everything. Mm. Because I didn't even realize. Like, I was I was very proud of the logo. Mm. And, that, and that was it. But as the show went on and the popularity got... And people would be like, I love that logo. Yeah, yeah. I love that logo. That's the hardest logo in the game. Yeah, residuals with logos if it goes onto a Fuck t-shirt. no, bro. Yeah. No, bro. I mean, I, that's why you charge a lot. Mm. That's why, if, like, you go in the Graphic Artist Guild Handbook, <laughs> you will see, like, the, those higher rates for logos mm. and shit like that. Because think about it. Nike. 
the guy who do does the swoosh or hmm. what was his name? I forgot. Hmm. Uh, guy or gal, but but that shit's on everything. Hmm. You know what I mean? Fucking that they sell more of that than anything else. They sell that swoosh. It's just other things are attached to the swoosh. Hmm. And and think about that. If you created that, <laughs> speaking of devils. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you create that and you're like yo I did that for like bottom dollar and the company is like you're gonna be like you're gonna be feeling sick fuming and I knew someone who was the, the lecturer their lecturer at university was the guy who did the channel 4 no logo. way he'd just constantly be lament well not lamenting but telling the story about how he never he just did it I think maybe in his afternoon you know tea break <laughs> and that's why you know what I mean do you not you charge you, know. you charge a lot yeah, it's for a jail that sentence because <laughs> nobody nobody is gonna want to do residuals on a fucking logo. Nah. but then if you want to print your own shit, like seeing as you're the one who done it, can you do you have restrictions from printing t-shirts well, or merch if you did it? Do you have like is it ever written into your contracts to preclude you from doing these? Yeah. Things? Well, to a mass amount, I guess. I mean, me personally, I've never even thought about it because once I do it for you, like it's done, it's handed over. It it. It will be, I think the only thing I might discuss is I can exhibit that I did it, or if I have a mm. book or a collection of my work, you know, it's in there, but like, I'm not going to do it and produce it to sell it mm -hmm. or anything like that. Like, I, I have no intention or thought of doing that. But also, when you, when you relinquish that, when you do that, like, that person is going to, they should, mm -hmm. go file you know, like file the copyright. This is their logo. Like that, at that point, this is their logo. Whether they want to trademark it or not, handle it. Like without some form of written shit, like I legally wouldn't be able to do that anyway. <laughs> if they did their business right. But me personally, like yeah, yeah, I, you know, art prints and shit. Like that's about as far as I'll go. But I'm always gonna be like, mm. you know, I, I reserve the right to do that. You know. So on that note, the plan is that we want to do a uh, an exhibition or something to that effect because this has been recorded and going out the same day, you understand, ladies and gentlemen. We don't muck about around here. Oh. Um, so at this point here, <laughs> at this point, we do have these uh, going while you're in, right? And, uh, yeah, man. And ideally, we want to try and get some sort of combination launch album with you being present in the building. The super Scam World sticker yeah, packs. Yeah, let's make it happen. Got some... Uh Random goodies, got some random hand-drawn slaps and some random hand-drawn character hmm. pieces in there. Uh, so different packs will have yeah, like different things. Crazy. Well, but the packs for the most part are the same, but it's like baseball cards. Well, I don't know mm -hmm. if they do that here. Yeah, but, yeah, get like a Pokemon wild card or something. Yeah. Right, right. So you know, which you could randomly get the pack that's got the the rare hand-drawn. Like out of this hundred, there's five. So. I brought these because, you know, you know, shout out to anybody that ordered stuff from overseas. Yeah, I'm that, you know, paying the VAT and mm. all that shit. And it's like, bro, so in some cases, the people pay almost as much as... For the stickers itself. For the stickers themselves. And I'm, I'm like, fuck. Mm. Like, mm. That's a lot. So I was like, you know what? Like, I'll have some. And, you know, whoever gets a whiff of this, man, just hit me on the DM. Whatever, you know, and you can just pay, like, local posters. That's cold. See? Yeah. See? Get yourselves a deal out here. Yeah. Um, and uh, as for uh, as for the Harry the, of Love Shear, talk to me. The album's coming out really, really soon. Yeah, the album's coming. So it's a, it's a con concept instrumental album mm. as opposed to just, like, a beat tape. Mm. It's something oh, okay. that I spent... It started in the MySpace days when, obviously, you could only put X amount of tracks on your yeah. thing, player. And then people would often be saying to me, look, you know, you make these beats and you're kind of making them pretty much as equivalent standard to what the Americans are doing, but then you put certain MCs on or whatever, whoever mm -hmm. gets the track, then it limits to whatever audience is into that particular rapper. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, this was more than one person said this to me back in them days. You've got to put, start putting beats out. But this was like 03, 04, so it wasn't really a... Other than instrumental albums from you know, like a tour vinyl mm. or something like that. Mm. It wasn't really a done thing to have instrumental albums very yeah. commonly. And then Diller and Madlib's beat tapes going out on LimeWire and all that game. sort of changed. Yeah, yeah. it's changed the landscape in that sense. So I started working on it from then, and I had certain tracks that I'd put up on this second MySpace page, and I just thought of the name Speechless because I was taking all the 
rappers speaking off of it. That's sick. But then, like, over years, so there were certain beats that just became folklore, where they were like, when are you going to put this shit out? There's this winter to spring beat that everyone who knew the MySpace page mm. still asks for to this mm. day, 20 years later. So I saw a play, you know, just the concept eventually came, like, settled with the concept being tracks that had that, Originally, it was beats that uh, uh, people would say, I don't want to rap on this, I just want to sit and listen to it or draw to it or some mm. shit, you know, it's not, it's too, I feel like I'd spoil it if I rapped on it or whatever, mm -hmm. so I was like, all right, cool, that's, that's going in this jar, because I'm proud of these beats, but then I started looking at it as what was the sort of common thread, and so the common thread was that they were self-contained songs that you could just play, and it wouldn't feel like it's lacking a mm -hmm. vocal or something, it's, it, it, uh, it holds its own space. And then so then I developed that even more and uh, allowed myself a little um, caveat where singing isn't r r speaking. So it's got singing samples. Nice. And so it's got, and then I've just, I've basically amassed like a real selection of proper gems that I'm really proud of over the last 20 years. Well, so how many tunes in total? I haven't got a track count because the way I'm going to do the rollout, it's going to be... Like I'm a playlist. One, this is going to be 1.0 and there's right. going to be other revisions and other... I'm going to kind of obscure the sort of what is the actual f final version. God, that's you know? good. So there'll be little versions that go out there that might differ to other ones. and you know. When does art stop being art? That's yeah, the but there's some tracks. People will know some of the beats just from things that I've put out there. Like I had a super dry Idris Elba commercial mm. that they used my one of the beats which I'd originally made thinking of the Le old Levi's commercials. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, it'd be cool to do something that's like a Levi's commercial. And then Super Dry ended up asking me for some music for the Idris link up thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I've got this. And they were like, perfect, thank you. And then <laughs> put it in there. And I'm like, whoa, I've got a video with Idris Elba doing this sort of fashion thing. That's crazy. And then uh, there's another one with a Mark Morrison sample flip. And um, originally it just started as a, like a I was doing a version that, you know, like a hip-hop version that would be like something you'd hear at the tunnel back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I wanted to do a hip-hop remix of it to play in the clubs. But then as I started doing these sample, uh, a cappella remixes, I started finding sample flips in the vocal. So again, in the speechless thing, what I've done is I've taken a lot of vocals, singing vocals, but I've done chops like I would do in the music, so it makes them say things that they didn't say in the original song. So you have to go back to the original and then go, hold on, it doesn't... Mm. Wait, what? That's <laughs> you know? so sick. So that's that's part of the thing. It's, it's stuff that I've be, it's been cooking slowly, slow cooking for yeah. 20 years straight. And no, it's, it's like time. Falling off the bone, man. It's yeah. time. You know, it's falling off the bone. Good man, well, we've been waiting for that for a while. That's what she yeah. <laughs> and on that note, we're out like in was out of fashion. <laughs> Scam. Big up yourself, yes, brother. Big up yourself. Big up yourself, Harry Love. No, but Broski. pure caliber in here on artistry. We've got it for you in its droves. All right. And remember, keep an ear on the and eyes on the Bye -bye. socials. <laughs> I'm gonna try and see if we can pattern up some sort of uh, signing slash exhibition slash uh, album launch of some capacity here. Um, yeah, Killer Killer podcast Real out. In was out of fashion. Big shout to the shares and carers. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't stay lucky, people. Easy. Yeah! It's a crime don't pay, but leave it to you.